Okay, so let's get going on section 6.2, and we're going to use loops to help us process the files now. Uh, I just want to say this video will not be as long as the last one, so uh, I apologize for that, but we should be, uh, you know, not too long on this one. So anyway, I just want to mention out, don't forget when you see this link on here, this is the link to the video from Tony Gaddis, our author, so I'd highly recommend watch this video, uh, kind of walk through some of the code, come back, watch his video here uh, where he goes over this whole section. So, um, and this is a good one that he does. I think it's about 12 minutes on, on his part. So uh, anyway, so we're going to use loops. Now, one of the things that, that uh, I don't know, at least that I like using loops for with this is that it gives you the ability to use, you can see on here, large amounts of data. So you're typically reading uh, from and writing to a file and it makes it easier for you. Uh, and it gives you the ability to expand so that, you know, you're not writing out every single read line for however many variables you have and, and uh, the inputs that you want to get. You can change it on the fly. So we can put a lot of things in here. Or if we have a big file with, say, 100, uh, you know, pieces of data in it, we can just go ahead and read it in with a loop and we're good to go. So there's a lot of benefits to it. I just think it makes it uh, easier coding. So uh, anyway, let's uh, definitely more efficient. So let's take a look at this first program. So 6-8. Uh, and for this program, uh, you can see we'll start out. I put a lot of comments in these. Some of these are from the book. Some of the ones are the ones that I added in. Uh, but you'll see on here, we do not have a file yet, which is fine. And, and by now, you should be able to look ahead and go, oh, wait a second. Here we go. We are creating using a W. We're writing a new file in here. Uh, and the very first input that you're going to get from the user, you can see it's an integer. And it says, OK, so how many days do you have sales? Uh, and so that's going to be that's going to be our input. Then we're opening a file. So we're opening sales.txt. And by opening, I mean we're creating it and we're going to write to it. And then if you come down here, here's the heart of the code is in this little loop right here. Okay, so uh, we're just using count as a variable here. So for count in range, and you remember good old range, you got to love this stuff. So remember the first value, we are starting with one. So typically it'll start with zero if you don't put a starting value. So we want to start with one. And then we want to use, for our particular range that we're using here, we're using whatever input up here by the user, we're adding one to it. Okay, so we make sure that it covers it. Remember, this works like less than kind of on the backside. So if they say seven days, uh, we want to make sure that this is seven plus one, it gives eight, so that it will go up to seven. All right, so here's what we're doing. We're saying in this loop, we're saying, okay, we want to go ahead. We're asking for a float and we're saying enter the sales for day number and then look at the way that this is written. In fact, I'm going to close this down real quick so we can see this whole line uh, and check out this line right here. So this complete statement. So we have um, sales is our variable that we're using and we're saying we need a float input. We're asking the user for this and then notice how this is set up. We're using count, the variable here, that starts at 1 and goes through whatever range that the user specifies. Uh, we're starting here. We're using that day. So it's going to start at 1. And then we're adding this little colon on here just to, as, as an output piece, just to give us a, a nice little kind of finished look to it. Now, the reason why we're setting this up, uh, many of you haven't used these, and I haven't used this too much in examples, but this is a great way of doing this. Uh, we're forcing this to be a string. So we're saying even though this coming out of here is an integer, we're saying, hey, we want this to be a string so that we can use the plus here. So we're adding it in using the plus, using the, you know, the, this, this operator so that we can add this in. If you don't force this to be a string and it leaves it an integer, this will not work. So you get an error, get a nice little line error up there. Um, so anyway, so this whole thing, you might take a look at this and, and uh, perhaps, you know, use it in, in the future, but uh, it, it's a great way of doing it. Okay, so then we're going to come down. We're going to use the right method again. So here we are, sales file, which is the file that we opened or created. Uh, and we're using the right method. We're forcing a string. We have to force the sales value that was entered as a float, forcing it to be a string, adding in the backslash n. So the backslash n again has to be in quotes. Uh, and that will put in the new line operator and store the data for us. So if I pull this back, and then this is just close. So not really that big a deal. But if I come back here... Pull this one back. What did I do with it? Okay, I totally blew this up. Come on, baby. Is it here somewhere? Where it lets me do it? Ah, come on, baby. 
I thought it would still let me shortcut it, but I guess not. Okay, so anyway, uh, so we have main right here. There's nothing here, but if I hit run, I'm going to say how many days do you have sales because I'm lazy. I'm going to say three. Uh, I want it to be quick, and I'm just going to say, I don't know, that and this and this. Okay, so the data was written. That's just our output statement here, and you notice the file was created. Uh, it forced a float for each one of those, and we are good to go. Okay, so... Um, look at this flow this saves you a lot of time because imagine if i had 10 days or whatever you don't want to have to write out this piece and assign a variable and do all that kind of good stuff so um the the loops will save you a ton of time okay so another way of doing it uh if you again don't know kind of what's going on you want to use read line so sometimes you'll use um as you're setting these up you'll want to set up a, a a while loop and use this particular condition so while line as a as a variable here does not equal remember exclamation point equal sign means not equal and then this is just an empty string so quote quote whether it's a you know single quote or double quote nothing in between so it's just an empty string so in other words saying while the loop is not empty while the string loop is not empty okay so take a look at this six dash nine i'm going to come up here um i put in way too much uh commenting in here i guess but that's okay so take a look at this uh as we start out we have, we're saying go ahead and open sales.txt and here's the, the read. So that file is already there. Uh, and what we're, we're going to do, this is kind of a funky one. So I put this, uh, these little comments, I put this little comment, I added this little comment too. Um, but what we're doing is in order for us to use, I'm going to scroll up a little bit, this particular uh, condition in here. So we're saying while line is not equal to an empty string. Well, right now, if I got rid of this line, it would be an empty string. So this is what's called a priming read. And what happens is this is reading something into line and giving it a value. Okay, so it's a way a way of setting that up. It doesn't have any impact about, for what we do here. This is just set up to get us going with this condition. Okay, so once we get into here, uh, we will have, uh, we're using a mount right here. We're forcing this to be a float. And we're coming in, um, we have this little print piece here, so format, display the amount, notice the formatting. So we're getting a nice little formatting in here. Uh, and then reads the next line. So let's go ahead and, what's in here anyway? Let's take a look. Oh, just those values there. Oh, notice this is an int. So we have an integer here, uh, but it will force it. So if I hit run, boom, there we go. Nice little output. Uh, two decimal places thanks to this little piece right here. So this is what I was talking about. If you forget to put this in, and you hit run, you get this nice little error in here. So look at all this stuff. Oh man, what's going on? Reference for assignment, blah, 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 all this kind of good stuff. Okay, so uh, so just remember you have to include this. So uh, nice little priming read for you there. Okay, so and then don't forget close at the end. All right, so again, a different, this time a while loop. Uh, this is very common and uh, you know while you're reading everything in. So this is the... Uh, this is kind of a cool thing. And in this one, you don't have to use range at all. So this one will just go through and read each line until it gets to the bottom of the sales.txt file and it's empty, returns an empty string, and then it knows it's finished. Okay, so regardless of how much we had in here, we'll keep going, which is really pretty nice. So this is this is a really common way of doing it. Okay, and um, just to kind of, this is just a uh, flow chart just representing that. Here's our initial read line that we use there, the primary read, primary read for that. And then it kind of just walks itself through. So you just saw it working. Okay, last thing for this uh, is in this one. So if we want to use a for loop, uh, we're going to go ahead and set something else, something else up like this. And you'll see, uh, it's probably easier just to see the code. Um, and it's going to iterate once each time as it's rolling through. Uh, you'll notice I put a little note in here. So I put the link and then I said, need to create a sales.txt file first. I wanted to show you that um, because in this particular one, it doesn't exist yet. So let's go over here, 6-10. So notice I'm trying to open using r sales.txt. Well, it's not there, right? So there's nothing. So if I hit run, you get nice little errors in here. So um, file not found, blah, 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 right? So um, it's good stuff. So you want to make sure you have the file created. Here's what we're going to do. I wanted to show you a way of doing this in, in REPL. So if I wanted to take the same data from over here from this sales.txt file as an example. Now we could always create one, 
right? So, or we could do a read in and ask the user what we've done and the other you know things and create our own. But we're saying maybe I want to use this file over here. So one of the things that you can do, when we click on this, you see you don't have um, you have copy link, but that, you're not going to use that. Uh, but if I click on the file itself and I pull up the data, it's really easy. You can go up here and you can download as a zip. It'll create a zip file, save all these whatever files are in here to a zip and download it to your computer. Great. And then you can unzip it, upload the file to this other one over here, and you'd be good to go. Easier way of doing that, if you know this is the data you want to use, is I click on it. This is the data I want to use. I'm going to come over here and highlight the whole thing. Either hit Control A or you know start up here, start there and, and highlight that little baby. Hit Control C on your keyboard. Whatever you want to do, I usually just hit Control A and then Control C so that I can select all with Control A and then copy with Control C. And then I can come over here. And I know this is my program without the file. I could just hit this little file button. So I'm going to add the file there. I'm going to call it sales.txt and copy it over that way. Okay. If this was a big file, you know, maybe you'd want to, you know, download it or if it's something that, you know, couldn't easily select or whatever. Um, you do have the download option and be able to upload it back in. But that's a really quick and easy way of doing it. Okay. So, uh, so we have that in there. Now, let's take a look at this particular code. So for this one, we're opening it. It looks really simple, huh? You guys are going to love loops with this stuff. Uh, so we have, we're opening this file. We have sales.txt now. And if I hit run, it basically does the same kind of a thing. So we're reading this in. So for line in sales file, meaning we're just going to read everything in. So read all the lines from the file. You have to convert to a float. You're doing a lot of conversions in, in, uh, in this. So we're converting this in and then printing it with a nice little format here. Oh, let's do this. Put the comma in there. Notice there's no comma. Boom, now there's a comma. So, um, and then we close the file out. Don't forget to use close, all right, when you're setting these up. Okay, so hopefully you've got kind of a, you know, a, at least a, I don't know, hopefully a good understanding of it. Uh, you know, I, I, hopefully you're feeling a little bit more comfortable with it. I think the first section was a little bit more difficult because everything was brand new. I think when you get to this point and you're looking at, uh, you know, this stuff and just putting the, the things that you've done in loops, it does make it easier. Uh, I'm going to also suggest this is that link I talked about a long time ago in a video about, um, in one of the earlier videos about uh, Tony got us doing an example. So this is the example that he's doing. So I would highly recommend um, watching this. It's very short, five minutes, 48 seconds. So it's not very long at all. Uh, and then, uh, you know, once you've obviously now you finish this video, go back. If you need a recap, watch this one that, that, uh, that Tony has in there uh, about this whole section and then watch this and how he does this program. It's very, it's very quick. It uh, just gives you a little, uh, you know, intro into it. Okay. And then you've got your assignments in Canvas to get started. So have fun.